Um, I'm Phil Jordan. I'm a doctoral candidate in the Communication and Information Sciences program, University of Hawaii. And uh, today I present you an excerpt of my dissertation study entitled Exploring the Referral and Usage of Sci-Fi in HCI Literature. I, uh, I have a few co-authors who like to work with me on this since a few years, and they are acknowledged on the title here. So I'm gonna open up with a question, and I would like you to maybe raise your hands if you think computer scientists should study sci-fi. Who thinks yes? Who thinks no, computer scientists should not study sci-fi? Okay, interesting. I was hoping for at least one no. Could somebody who raised the hand for yes, one person maybe provide one comment? Why so? Anybody? Please? Yeah, so I guess a lot of times in sci-fi they offer a like a dystopian view, and so that can help us to think about implications of our work, uh, like ethically and for society. Great point, thank you. So, this topic, you run into this topic, this uh, hybrid between science and art, science fiction and computer science, HCI, in professional magazines. To some extent, if you look for it, you find selected research using science fiction and computer science research. For example, the paper on the right by Troiano looked at 400 sci-fi movies as means of a data source. And they analyzed interactions in these movies and delineated five categories of so-called shape-changing interfaces. So that is a very, very small body of work in this area, located in computer science research. This is one paper from Larson. It's in Futures Journal. And he was looking at sci-fi movies. There are 10 movies on the top, two per decade. In the 60s, 2001, up to total recall, AI minority report in the 2000s. And he was cross-tabulating that with, um, oh, it's a pointer, with like the depictions uh, of like computing technology. So it starts with mainframe computers in the 60s and 2001, to color CRTs in Blade Runner, and so on and so forth. Trying to visualize some kind of an evolutionary trend of uh, sci-fi technologies in contrast to real world science at the time. Um, of course, uh, to warm you up with this topic a little bit, the common examples, I'm sure some of you know one or the other. The famous example, Star Trek Communicator, uh, inventor of the Motorola Star Trek, states explicitly, explicitly that he was inspired by watching the show. Martin Cooper to develop the device. On the right, there was recently a Qualcomm X Prize concluded to develop like a portable medical self diagnosis system worth $25 million. Prototypes on the bottom right, here and here. This is like a needle table developed by a military researcher based on the movie X Men, somewhere in the 2000s, which shows some kind of dynamic display in the final phase of the movie, when like uh, the final fight of the movie happens. On the right, um, we see a Roomba cleaning robot, and we see uh, the robot working cleaning us in the fifth element. And if you've seen Westworld, they have these fancy foldable interfaces, and you can't help but to compare to uh, the CD Axon, which is out there, and the potential rendering of the new Galaxy S10 yet to come. Lastly, and the dystopian view was brought up, um, Black Mirror is a sci-fi show available on Netflix. Uh, one of the episodes introduces a kind of a social rating system for people. So if we have a good interaction, you give me five stars. If not, I get like one star and my rating goes down. And if I'm below a certain amount of stars at the airport, I won't be able to check in anymore or use the express line. So my affordances in the real world will be limited. So this is like a warm up to the topic, and in general, my dissertation looks at how science fiction is used in computer science research. 
Today I present you a small excerpt of that research track. And what I do is, I study science communication, how to present papers. I do qualitative and quantitative content analyses. You could interview people too. There are other methods. I chose that approach, it has its advantages and limitations. Implications of this research can be that you can maybe like come up with somewhat of a practical guide to seriously consider like science fiction tropes or science fiction visualizations of technologies. Yeah, we watch a movie, we not only see an interface, we might see an interaction. We all know the minority report orchestration, which was yeah, considered not really usable because you get tired very fast. Uh, I'm also like uh, working on a paper which looks at the actual science fiction references, which is mostly Western. What I find in the paper so far, excluding like Asian content. So this maybe can like implicate somewhat of a cultural bias or point towards like a preference of researchers who are so much supposed to be rational in using like uh, preferential content. And overall, um, there are like innovations across the country, universities, selected universities offer computer science, AI ethics courses, which use science fiction visualizations. So today I present, um, dear chair, you mind giving me a timer real quick so I know if it's like five minutes or three, six minutes, good, thank you. So today I present a smaller case study, this paper, but it's in the context of a larger research track I've been working on for a while. Started this with a position paper in 2015 in the context of a sci-fi workshop at OSCI, where I met my future collaborators, so go to workshops. Uh, I published an agenda for sci-fi five research with my, uh, as co-author with my collaborators at ACE 2016. I had a poster at ACI 16, two years ago. And last but not least, I had last year an AHFE paper which I wrote for the celebration of Star Trek, which was having its 50th anniversary. So I looked at Star Trek in the ACM Digital Library. I wanted to know how Star Trek has been handled there. So this is some prior work. Uh, I also have, uh, in parallel, uh, gained somewhat of a little recognition, I guess. So. Um, we were able to, exter to secure an external grant at the University of Western Sydney for that topic. Uh, in March, I wrote a blog post on ACM Interactions, you can read, which looks at the difference between science fiction stories, science fiction movies and shows as a visual means to derive inspiration. And then we have, of course, more. Yeah, We have science fiction video games, interactive material. That's a whole other ball game. Um, this article today, was highlighted in my T-Tech review, so you can like read that if you don't want to read the paper. It's a quicker read. And currently I have two more submissions in review. One looks at science fiction robots, and another one is a doctoral consortium submission. So finally I'm here, and I think I'm good on time. So this paper looks at science fiction in the Kai main track. Uh, Kai main track because it's the premier venue, sorry, HCII for like uh, research in HCI, human factors. Um, I have a very simple method. I look for certain words, keywords, search terms, using like the interface available, and I retrieve the papers, and I analyze the contextual presence, occurrence of science fiction in the paper. So I do a full text search and retrieval of six variations of sci-fi in the Kai main track, <clears throat> Excuse me, the high full proceedings, I retrieve the papers, and me and my collaborators, we uh, open code them in a qualitative manner, consolidate the codes, and provide a descriptive analysis. In this paper, I found in the 5,800 something Chi main proceedings, spanning 26 years from 1982, 175 referrals across 83 papers in the main track. They also have an extended abstract, a work in progress and so on and forth. So I look only at the full papers. And I find five research areas where sci-fi and HCI research intersect, and I try to provide, similar to Larson, somewhat evolutionary view of how science fiction was like in relationship to these emerging research themes at the time. So this is the query I run. 
May, gives me this 137. These are like uh, limitations and affordances of the search interface at the time. I can only use what the databases offer me, mostly basic Boolean searches. It's classical search and retrieval, as well as content I'm subscribed to via my university. So I end up with uh, these six terms. You see a little sci-fi with a hyphen, without, with a space, together. In this particular study, I look for this generic full text occurrence of sci-fi. So this like uh, are these 137 papers, how they come back over time. In green, the full proceedings for the purposes of this pilot study. I only look at like um, the full the main proceedings and exclude like the other proceedings which are again work in progress, doctoral consortiums, and such submissions. So this is like a search term frequency across the final set I'm using in this paper, 83 papers in the Chi main track, which I retrieved. What you see here is something very common. Uh, the vast majority of the papers have one single referral of science fiction. No surprise there. It goes down, and we have the one paper which has 40 referrals. In the paper, you will find uh, explicit examples and quotes of the longer and the shorter end of that curve uh, with papers on both ends. So these are the categories they came up with, and they are like well defined in the paper. Well, let's say they defined to some extent and confident about. So we get, of course, type one errors. Um, thank you. For example, let's look for the movie Avatar in the Kai proceedings. Um, there's a robot in a very old sci-fi movie, Metropolis. The robot is called first female robot. It's called Maria. Let's search for Maria. Yeah, we will retrieve a lot of papers. The Terminator. We will receive a lot of false positives. So even though when you look only for science fiction, you run into an imperial evaluation of a, let's say, like a, a system for like online movie streaming, and there was an empirical experiment, and the science fiction reference occurs because one participant selected a science fiction movie and another like a comedy. But it was never about the participants' preferences. It was about the system. The system is good. So I have like a bunch of false positives, and then we distributed this whole set of 83 papers. We took out 25% and gave it to my three co-authors and did some individual coding, came back together and discussed the results, and I proceeded to do the remainder of the coding. So this is very similar to the Larson, uh, the Larson image. Um, here we see these five areas, theoretical direct design research, human-robot interaction, I call this new interactions, I call this visions of future computing, and this like human body modification over time. So for example, if you look at this blue bar here in theoretical design research, the blue bar represents publications from 2010 to 2017. This is like, yeah, retrieved quite a lot in recent times, mostly to the emergence of the buzzwords design fiction, which is like being thrown around in the Kai community quite a lot. Similarly, a human body modification, we talk about insertables, things you can swallow, do it yourself, cyborgs, people who like put like an RFID chip underneath their skin. Science fiction refers to co occur with these types of um, papers recently, 2010 to 2017s. I want to show you one quote instead of just like these numbers of one of the papers. So this is like uh, one of the retrieved papers, uh, Happenman and many others. Um, the quote says, this section, of that this section describes the use of insertables as seen in pop culture in the recent leap from sci-fi into reality. Insertable devices have ascended sci-fi for decades, from the Cybermen of Doctor Who to the Terminator. The 70s TV series, the $6 million man, the bionic woman, woman saw humans rebuilt. In the universe, we have the technology. While the above is not yet technically possible, the concept of insertables is no longer contained to the boundaries of science fiction. I have uh, 
many more quotes for all five categories in the paper, as much as I could provide, depending um, the size of the submission. So for this small pilot study, uh, I provide you with the following conclusion. It appears that cyber becomes more acknowledged in the type proceedings or conference in recent years. And prime example is uh, the design fiction, theoretical design research. Although you have to take my numbers with uh, care because they are not normalized, right? You have to understand that uh, every year there are so many general submissions sent to CHI, and I have not provided evidence that actually a relative proportion is increasing over time. But I show that, for example, design research within that retreat set is growing, for, ex for instance. I find these uh, five broader research themes, which intersect with sci-fi in a meaningful way across the whole duration of the conference. Yeah? So I find a paper from 1982 that refers to modern office infrastructures. It was from a Japanese researcher. I think it's in the paper. As installations we only know from science fiction. Similarly to Larson, I try to indicate a little bit the changes over time across these five fields. And uh, I did explicit examples where science fiction is used in computer science research in the case of the Kai conference. So <coughs> there are many limitations to my approach, and I'm closing out within a moment. Two more slides, I think. This is an exploration. This builds on uh, somewhat related research in like uh, studies of science, technology, and society. Film studies, of course, HCI research, inspiration, creativity, etc. The methodology might change these categories. I'm not fine. I have a very, very small set size. Yeah, 83 papers. In the Kai main track, 137 total is from 5,800 to point, so, 2 point something percent. I absolutely concede that. The contribution of science fiction to computer science is as difficult to derive from a paper. This is hard. But I can't go back in time to 1982 and ask every researcher. Maybe some of them are sadly not there anymore. Maybe they are, but I have to reach out to them, talk to them. So this is like an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. Usually when we talk about impact, we do citations like genetic analysis. We didn't do it as well because the sample size was actually quite small. We were like an inter-rater inter reliability statistic. As I mentioned earlier, we did some independent coding of a quarter of the set, and we discussed within the raters the final coding scheme I proceeded. There are, of course, no clear boundaries. You know, if somebody puts like an AI chip into his skin, is it a human body modification or is it artificial intelligence? It's, uh, it's like, yeah, it comes along with such a study of strong interdisciplinary nature, which ultimately connects art and science yeah, in a very broad view. And I pointed out a little bit the uh, library information science dilemma which you have when you look at the databases for science communication, where you do meta or full text retrieval, precision versus recall, and so on and forth. I close out with this example, sorry. On the left is uh, Baymax from debatable science fiction movies called Big Hero 6. On the right is Puffy. Um, this is a paper, Interact 2017. And they developed this uh, companion for children with a neurodevelopmental disorder. In the paper, Puffy is mentioned along with Baymax, this is from my robots, work in progress in the submission, as the uh, aesthetics, the visuals of the robot have been inspired by the movie. But my co-authors were actually able to talk at the conference to the authors. And they said without the movie, there wouldn't have been a robot. But it's not stated like this in the paper. It's referred to, but it's not said. Puffy is a result because we saw Baymax in videos.
as in future work, mainly this, this is like a larger data set. So I'm going now to two studies at ECM, uh, which is library and IGP Explore. I'm having 1,400 papers from the 50s to 2017. So that should be interesting, and I'll apply some quantitative content analysis. Yes, I mentioned we can talk uh, with computer science researchers. I'm thinking about proposing science fiction visual materials as design fictions in another submission in the near future. This is something, when I go back to teaching, I would really like to do, integrate science fiction into classes on like agency of technology, social technical studies. I think it can be quite engaging for students. These visualizations serve as great examples of what could happen with us, both in a good and in a bad way, or they're usable for virtual and novel fields of illuminating interaction. And my background from my dissertation, I might be able to propose for a seriatic witness in computing. And I know I went over, I'm sorry. Uh, questions, comments, ideas, or collaboration. I'm open to anything else about a stack of business cards. Thank you so much for listening and coming.